I'm really excited about this one. Okay, welcome to Good Money Podcast, where Jacob's really excited about this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now, yeah. what are we talking about today? Oh, we're on the virtues. We are on the virtues. Our principal uh, attack here is pretty simple, that there is a way for moderating money. It's use, yep. what it is, keep, yep. keeping it what it is, yep. and building a society in which its distribution and use is just, equitable, fair, and good. We and, got a better plan than either yeah. the Republicans or the Democrats. That's right. You, Capitalists you know, or the socialists. That's right. Re Republicans, they just want to move money around by not doing anything and letting the market act as a god. And the Who is the market? Um, it's, he lives on, no, um, the <laughs> jury lane, <laughs> Democrats for their own sadistically stupid part, um, want the exact same thing, <laughs> but throw in taxes as like a thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but when the they, but when they, when they justify planning, it, yeah, trimming, exactly, exactly. bushes. Yeah. It's the same guy. That was Hayek's great in, you know, imagery is that sometimes the government would have to come in and like trim, like, like as a gardener. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we think that it's not, in fact, either the tax or the market, but is, in fact, the virtues. This is a V, not an X, um, that I'm making with my arms right now. The virtues, those <laughs> habits of soul, the perfections of the human... Per oh, and, and could it ever be any other way than that the way things go well is that we become perfected in ourselves? We have this bizarre mentality that somehow the way we're going to get the goods as a society... We can be bad people and right. things go well. Like it, what? Has, it has nothing to do with uh, like us as individuals. It's like saying, like, okay, the way we're going to get the cure is by everyone being really sick. <laughs> it's like, well, that's, well, okay. I guess in pandemic times, people actually do say that. <laughs> but... <laughs> so not a timely, was like the worst thing. not a timely metaphor. Yeah. Oh man! But mask wear, the, 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 <laughs> the vaccine, point, the point, getter person guy over here. The point we can't do herd immunity. I'm you, ruining this. I'm done? sorry. Done? I am done. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, welcome to Good Money, where Jacob's done. <laughs> um, we believe that the lack, like the reason we have a society of massive income inequality, of injustice, of usury, of idiocy, and of poverty is because we do not have the virtues and we don't even have the language which, with which to demand the virtues of ourselves and of others. So what we're trying to do is just articulate these things. Yeah. These are what the virtues are. And today we're talking about a virtue, which uh, the big joke here for all those who are in it for the chuckles <laughs> Is that we usually talk about this particular word as a vice. Liberal. Being liberal. Being liberal. Oh my gosh. This See is gonna, how the universe has a big joke on us? This is, we, I feel so dumb. I feel so dumb. I spent all this time saying I, I'm post- Post-liberal. We need to be contemporarily liberal. <laughs> right now. Get liberal. Get, get liberal. Get in this hot tub and stew a little with us. All right. We're going to talk about- Liberality. Liberality is the which, name of the virtue. Which is, I think that there's a way that we don't have to just say like, oh, isn't it weird that we have two words? I think it's actually the lack of liberality mm -hmm. is the reason for liberalism, actually. I think yeah. I can make that argument by the end. But Some people have made that argument, oh, actually. I'm sorry. You know, you try so hard to well, <laughs> make your freaking place in this world, and then you find that some... I actually, I, I, I'm, I'm being unfair, actually. There. Was it John Madai? It wasn't Madai. No, right. it was... It was uh, you have to beat him up. A woman from Princeton. Okay, well, she had the, the history of... What's Princeton? Lost his, it's uh, where kings go to school. Oh, I thought, I thought they... it was that fertilizer place. Yeah. <laughs> That too. That's that's where they go to school. <laughs> Dummies? What are they going to school at a fertilizer place for? All right. So this is the idea with liberality. With her idea at least yeah. was that like the, the word just etymologically started there. Okay, well we'll get there. Okay. What is liberality? Liberalitas in Latin is understood to be a virtue where people give the right amount. All the time. Yeah. All right. Amount all the time. It toss. <laughs> it's the idea. It's, it's a virtue that St. Thomas says bespeaks a nobleman. Not because the person who has this virtue has a lot of money. That's not right. That's for the magnificent man. Right. Rather, the liberal man can be even even have only like two pence to her to their name. You know, I'm thinking about the woman who gives the 
two copper coins. Yeah, so she's liberal. You know, she is liberal wow. because she gives the right amount. Now, the the part of the reason why they always give the right amount and and give frequently and okay. often is because they have the the posture, the disposition of a nobleman. A nobleman meaning that someone that has their shoulders back, knowing that they are always going to be taken care of. You yeah. think just kind of as a rich person should be in a certain sense what they're giving all the time because they're not worried about money. Mm. They've mastered it. Again, as I say, like this they should be. Yeah. Um yeah. is is really like bespeaks this worrylessness. Wow. Um that, that the liberal person has. They have they have totally assumed Christ's teaching in, mm-hmm. in Luke where he says uh that the way of anxiety is the way of the nations. The whole uh, oh, look that's, at the li- that's my bit. That's your bit. Yeah, well, I think this is really cool. Q Mark. I, what I'm learning now is I'm liberal. Didn't realize it. Oh yeah, you're I, liberal. I, All this time, you thought worry you were so little. No, you know what? I'm not liberal. I because I worry so little bit about money that I just like lose it. Like, oh well, then you I might be a prodigal. It, I leave it places yeah. or like that's I, like one of the opposing vices to it. Yeah, yeah, my wife finds it in my jean pockets. My trad wife. Um. <laughs> It's not even true. Uh, no, the, the pockets is true. Oh, um, okay. Trad wife is a little dubious. Yeah. Um, we can all dream, though, you know. Um, she, she makes fun of mm, <laughs> She makes fun of me for this all the time. That I'm, uh, and, and I don't think it's liberality because what's missing is I, I don't think I'm giving frequently. Mm. Um, I'm not worried, but I'm also not like giving well and frequently. Huh. So I, I, what I'm saying is I need to grow in that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a certain... I would have picked you out to be a liberal man. Really? Yeah, I would have. Well, yeah. maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe You're very, yeah. Well, I'll let think, Jesus tell me if I'm if Yeah, I'm that's liberal. better. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I might steer you off the wrong path. Yeah, look, oh, cool. I he don't was, have to work. He was conforming. He was converting up until you told him that, Jacob. Yep. You ruined it. Yeah, that's a good point. So never tell we your can always grow virtues. in every virtue. So that's that's, I guess, the thing that we should all genuinely learn but you know your point is good though so a lack of worry yeah this is what christ talks about i think it's just awesome because you know sometimes people make fun of christians or, or like kind of watery christians for saying things that sound kind of hippie-ish like oh man jesus is my friend and it's all about yeah. just i don't worry anymore now that jesus is a part of my life and yeah okay there's a way you can make that trite i guess but screw those people because it's not trite. It's awesome. Jesus brings peace. Jesus brings freedom from anxiety. What's the thing that Jesus says every time he shows up in a bar? Be not afraid, right? <laughs> and then he says, amen, amen, I say to you. And then he leaves. And that's Jesus. And it's, no, I'm sorry, I'm being flippant now. I'm sorry. But it is true that Christ characterizes the nations. So the power structures of this earth the, the actual nations that the Jews were surrounded by, and for us, our particular power structures that we dwell yeah, under Yeah, our modern today. nations, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He characterizes them as being those who worry. So mm-hmm. when he talks to his disciples, he says, do not be as the, uh, do not do as the nations do. Uh, do not be as the nations, um, worrying about what shall I eat, what shall I wear, don't you know that the Lord has provided for you? Um, mm-hmm. And uses obviously the, the sparrow and the lily and all that as the examples of God's abundance. Um, and that is really what Christ brings. He says, when we worry, when we worry and we begin to doubt in the provident and abundant care of God, right? We are then tempted and often fall to this temptation to act in a way that is anxious and thus needs to gather resources, right? Mm-hmm. So we say, mm-hmm. oh, God's not going to take care of me. You look around. Well, then I better take care of me. Mm-hmm. How do I take care of me? Well, I can't just sit around waiting for God. I can't, you know, I have to be active in in accruing protection yeah. against the evil and danger of this world. And so what do I do? I amass. I amass resources. I amass wealth. Right? Right. Yeah. And so worry is the fundamental attitude uh, that leads to amassment. 
Yeah. So it was really interesting when you said, yeah. when you made this distinction between the liberal man and what we might just say is the rich man, mm-hmm. because I think it's definitely true. When you uh, see like the average rich man today, actually they're like completely dominated and characterized by worry. Yeah. Money is all they think about. Yeah. They watch TV shows on money. They listen to podcasts on money. It's Why ridiculous. are you listening to our podcast right Get now? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they talk to you about their money. They look at the stock market. They check their phones all the time. I yeah. used to think these rich people were texting. They're not even texting. They're looking at little lines. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. you know, like, you know, I guess that can be fun in its own way. But the point is, um, they are not free from money. You know, St. Paul says whatever overcomes a man enslaves him. They're slaves to money. Yeah, um, that's right. It, I mean, it, even when, yeah. when Dante, so the opposing vice, there's two opposing vices, but one of the opposing vices to liberality is covetousness. Mm. And when Dante chucks the covetous people in hell forever, their contrapasso, like the, their punishment that is justly fitting for the sin that they most particularly committed was actually being Sisyphus forever. They were always pushing rocks up a hill and and screaming. And th- there's another side of this too, which is really quite interesting. So they're, they're be- well, but they're pushing up this hit rock because it's never enough. There's yeah. always a massing. You don't trust in God. You trust in yourself. You trust in mammon. You trust in this system. Well, right. mm-hmm. and, um, and, yeah. and so, and Based upon their worry, yeah. like you always find that the covetous per- people, the, those defined by wanting more and more and more, um, and that's how it is. Shows up in, in the Summa, right? Mm-hmm. Wanting more and more and more. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it makes sense, um, right? Because if you're replacing God as a source of security, then God, being an eternal source of abundance, yeah, is not going to be easily rep- replaced. The best that humanity can ever do to um, um, aspire to infin- infinity is repetition. That's right. Yes. That's all we have. Yep. Do it again and again. So money all the time. Keep on getting more. more Push more, the more. rock yep. up the hill again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. And it's interesting that you find, I don't know if you've noticed this, but yeah. a lot of the covetous people that I know get really mad at the prodigals. And, I, and as, as somebody that's working off covetousness myself, I, I saw this in myself quite frequently too, is that the people who just spend money flippantly, just don't save, just don't, don't, don't spend thinkingly. They're the worst. Like they're horrible. You ever heard this? It's people call, call you a prodigal. Cause I, I yeah. tend towards covetousness. You tend towards prodigality. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I have, um, which is of course the other opposing right. We should say vice of liberality. And they also are in the same circle of hell, also pushing up <laughs> the Sisyphean rock. And they always yell back and forth at one another. Oh, that's hilarious. Like, that's what they do for, for eternity is like, why do you say, why well, do you toss, you know? I got to read Dante. Yeah. What page is that on? Seven. Seven, yeah. yeah that's, that's <laughs> it's Canto Seven. Okay, Sorry. it's on page four. I actually <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, uh, no, I think that's right. I do tend towards um, um, prodigality. Um, I think about... Um, this time when I kind of skirted the line because we didn't have any money left. We had maybe like $200 in our bank account. Um, and we bought a really big dinner for, I mean, granted it was for others or something, I guess, cute about it, but it was probably not the, the wise choice. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and it makes sense because, um, when you look at, an opposing vice, um, it helps you to not recognize your own, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, when I'm like, want to justify being a prodigal, Mm -hmm. the way I justify it is by getting pissed off at people who are probably actually just liberal or at least tending that way. But then as if what they're really doing is covetousness. Yeah. Does that make sense? So I'm like, like, I don't want to be like them, like, like caring about money all the time. I don't want to be thinking about money all the time. I want to just let it bounce off me, like water off a duck's back. I have some money. I spend some money. I love it. I love the world. I want to eat stuff and I want to drink stuff and I want to run down the street naked. No, Mm. sorry. I got a little on. Mm. (laughs) The point is you make out the vice, uh, you make out the virtue of liberality to be covetousness. Yeah. And And, and similarly it goes the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. There's a material covetousness as well where where people will be making a lot of money Mm -hmm. and they say, oh yeah, I don't budget. I don't like thinking about money. I just spend, you know, less than I make. And Uh, it's like, oh my gosh, well, that's, that's a big issue. Like that means that you are not accounting for the talents that God has given you. Right. This is the first rule of money that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. the, The money is for something. 
Yeah. If you don't let it be transparent to the real goods of creation that are for us all, then it becomes an idol. Right. And, yeah. and you know, even there's something, there is something good about what they're trying to do. It's like, they think money's bad. I don't want to think about it mm-hmm. all that much. But then they're forgetting also the third rule of, of money, which is give so as, spend it so as to become a saint. That's right. You know, and you don't become a saint by saving. No, I mean, there's a reason it's the prodigal son, right? Who... It's, well, it's the prodigal son who gets same. It's also the the man in the talents who who did not put his money to work right. and then is killed before right. the before the king. So in yeah. either case, kind of sucks. Yeah, it's just pigs or death either way. <laughs> but that's a good point because I would say that pigs are better than death. And Aquinas says. The prodigality is better than covetousness. I win. You uh. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's really, I think, really important because Aquinas says that at least prodigality gets what money is because it's for spending. Right. So, okay, yeah, the prodigal is is imprudent. He might even be evil, and usually his actions tend towards all sorts of other vices like this, yeah. kind of, like laziness, luxury, all this, all these problems. Licentiousness. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, but... You know, at the end of the day, you got to say, at least he's taking this money and burning it. Like it's being put to use, right? yeah. even if it's thoughtless use and all those critiques. Whereas the covetous man isn't treating money as money at all. He's actually in a kind of unnatural relationship. Mm. Whoa, whoa. More like sodomy than like. Ooh. Anyways. Yeah, it's true though. And, and even St. Thomas says that prodigality is more easily reformable. Like if you are prodigal then it's easier to tend towards liberality because you are able to release yourself from money. Yeah. But you just need to be more, th- you need to be thoughtful about it. You need to be holy in your releasing of money. Whereas with covetousness, it's just so blasted hard to unhabituate somebody towards this false sense of prudence sure. where they're caring more about their temporal life than their yeah. eternal life, where they yeah. care more about this false sense of security for themselves yeah. and caring for their neighbor. Well, and especially in America where it's basically a piety to be covetous. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like you worrying about money and never really believing in the abundant providence of God is pretty much what it means to be an American. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Sorry. It's not, I mean, no, it's not true. Of course it's not true, but it is, it is the ethos of, um, uh, capitalism, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, it's on you. You pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Your mm-hmm. work equals money. Your money is time. Your time is money. Money is worth. Time is valuable. I mean, it all just becomes one thing where it says you have to save yourself from death through money. Yeah. And, and, yeah. But in the covetous I, yeah. m- m- man thinks more that the, or at least in his actions, makes money to be the end rather mm. than stuff. Sure. And at least a prodigal is trading real stuff right. for their money but you know you know but they are still it, it, going to hell that's right hell bound and the um Aquinas does say though that uh, you gotta some some somewhere i think he says that an inordinate like discussion of demons is a bit dangerous and similarly i think we're discussing the vices too much let's get back to that from which they depart liberality liberality so do you know any liberal men then because i think yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of great examples. Yeah. I think there's, so there's, we've talked about how the liberal man is the one who uh, is free to give. Is, 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 is He has a sense of security in God so that he's able to, to give well. But he's also, there's another aspect of liberality as well, where you understand that all things are gift, um, where creation is just one giant gift and that God has given it to all of us. And when you see this in, in the Garden of Eden, of course, when, when Adam sets down is set down and, and is said, eat all of it, you know, two hold back, but just all of it. You don't even notice the two, you know, at that point, because it is just such abundant gift. Yeah. And the liberal, the most liberal person I know, in the good sense, is, is my uh, son's godfather. Who's the most liberal person you know in the bad sense? Uh, Joe Biden, Kamal Harris. Okay. Yeah, you can keep talking about your godfather. <laughs> he, uh, one thing, one. Th- I mean, he. You could kind of go off on the list of different liberal things that he does. Like he'll oftentimes like tip more than what the job was for. He, um, not just at meals, but also like you know, time was there was like a guy who dropped off gravel, and he's like, all right, oh, it costs this much. Well, I'll give you more than what it cost. You know, put that in your back pocket. Um, 
be constantly opening up his home to random strangers. It's like people, you know, found in parking lots and stuff like that. I mean, probably about 50, 200 people have just lived at his home for an extended period of time. I was one of them for a little while. That was fun. Uh, and, but one thing that I like, which is in particular, which is kind of fun, is he always keep, keeps at least two cases of beer in his refrigerator because and he doesn't drink all that much. He might have two beers a month. Oh, wow. Um, which is, you know, maybe a vice. He should pick that up a yeah. little bit. But is he a convert? No. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No excuse. Yeah, no excuse. But the reason is that he never wants people to feel bad. So if you only have two beers right. in your refrigerator, oh gosh, and it's yeah. like, oh, I really shouldn't take that one. They don't. They don't have enough. But if there's, I'll take one, and you don't even notice. Like, wow, this is amazing, and it's just this absolute sense of freedom, which is really something with mm. the liberal man engenders in others because he has it in himself oh so he passes on that lack of worry yeah right by being abundant yeah yeah absolutely wow that's great i should keep more beer in my fridge <laughs> my neighbor my neighbor's like that actually yeah yeah my, that's what we try and do i yeah. took that from tim you yeah. Know? yeah 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 but i kind of slack on it i think we only have like 12 beers in there right now mm. have oh, one have one thanks <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, uh, that is awesome because one of the things we keep coming back to yeah is that and it seems like a little bit blasphemous to say, but it's because money has become idolatry um, in our nation, is that to have a bunch of money, mm -hmm. and even to a certain extent, like just to have money, is to be, whether you would like it or not, an image of God. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. I don't mean this in where it gets taken sometimes by like prosperity gospel, gospel of wealth sort of things, where the equation is something like, therefore as evidence of like holiness or godliness, amass more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Precisely the opposite. I'm just saying that to have money is to be in a position um, of ability to give. Yeah. And it, what characterizes the father more yeah. than that he gives good gifts? He gives good and, you gifts. Know, that's every good gift comes from above. And, and you and I didn't, I mean, it sounds so silly in a certain respect, but I, I do mean it genuinely uh, that I didn't really understand the whole Garden of Eden abundance of trees thing until i saw tim's refrigerator oh, yeah. um yeah, yeah, yeah. because i i in for whatever reason and it is certainly my fallen state i just focused on the two trees or nothing what well, the one tree what am i saying two trees i always kind of toss in the tree of life in there for whatever reason knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is like well he's holding that back from him yeah and and i just really it's like tim you know his two beers they would have was was angry orchard he would always like those is two beers a month do they count their cider but those he would have those in there and oh my gosh if he ever he didn't even tell me this but if it had he told me you know can you just save me to to angry orchards of, of course i didn't even notice them yeah. you know in there next to everything else it's just this absolute mm. display of over abundance which makes the sin even of adam and eve even even worse right, in my and, mind yeah, and, just and like, what and what is, is that incredible. sin but turning the garden into an angry orchard <laughs> that was good yeah baby oh um, <laughs> yeah the patristics that are boys the big mm -hmm. guys the dads mm -hmm. the fathers they mm -hmm. are all about this claim uh ephraim uh, especially bemoans the chrysostom as well bemoans adam for focusing in on the one thing that he was not allowed to have, right? When the whole point was that he was allowed to have the fruit of every tree of the garden. Yeah. Um, and I think this is like what liberality, like you're saying, what this allows us to do. It's to be free of an over-exaggerated obsession with possible disaster, possible want, possible mm -hmm, poverty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? It's not that those things post fall don't exist it's that um we can't make them up when they're not here yeah that is the origin really of sin is to look at god's creation and give it a critique <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is essentially <laughs> saying like you held something back i mean you think about the mm -hmm. lie the lie of the serpent is is exactly the same because uh, he tells eve that you lack something, mm -hmm. namely the certain knowledge, right? Yeah. You lack um, the divinity. Yep. Now, previously, this had never been been described as a lack, right? It's a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's not like human nature um, 
I mean, it gets weird because we are supposed to be participants in the divine life, but it's not like we were by nature supposed to have divinity in the way that God is divine. Like, right. um, but the devil told us that mm -hmm. and we went for it. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh, like I, so, so what we really did is we presumed scarcity. We presumed lack, um, and, and then structured our world around it. So yeah. you can see the whole fall being this weird so decision good, yeah. we made that God is not liberal, that mm -hmm. he isn't a provident giver who has, has given us everything we need. And so the whole story of salvation is just mankind again and again, building city after city and trying to be our own provident gods yeah. because we no longer trust him. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think, I think you're absolutely right. Like what I, what I was trying to say when I said that the prayers with money is an image of God, I mean that you are an image of God or you are a false idol of God, whether you would or not, because if you are not a sign of gift and frequent gift, right? Then you are a sign of stinginess and a sign that tempts us to believe in the lack. Uh, yeah, I like this idea of that once you focus in on the lack, I mean, this is, then you start to put, put like revolve your entire world around it. And this is exactly the difference between the um, Reformation view of the fall and the Catholic vision of the fall. So whereas, you know, the thorns and thistles that are so famous in, in the Genesis account, um, which will, will, will hamper Adam's work, those for Calvin didn't exist until after the fall. Yeah, God created them as, as kind of a punishment. With fire ants, I think he mentions yeah. as well, which is, I love that detail. Mosquitoes. Um, but for Thomas, it was that he finally noticed the thorns and the thistles, they were always there, yep. but you have this unholy obsession with them yep. all of a sudden. And so your whole life is about weed whacking now. Right. And, and he says that we had by grace, um, the in intellect to know what thorns and thistles are for. Yeah. So they, they weren't obstacles to us trying to amass protection in this world. They were part of God's creation understood as being very good and known for what exactly they were very good for. Yeah. And once you presume lack, once you say, well, this, this gift of God is just a little bit stingy. He's holding stuff back. Then yeah. everything becomes suspicious and you no longer have that penetration into the gift of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you start to think like, okay, well, I know God gave me some good things. Okay. But I know he also has some things back. And now these thorns, I don't know, they're getting in the way of me getting this food and I need enough food to be able to survive the winter because yeah. what if God doesn't take care of me then? I mean, and it, it's plays out throughout the Bible. You know, God tells the Israelites, you know, in an exercise of just telling them to stop even pretending like amassing is going to, to somehow give them security in this world. He says, Every every seven years, you just let your fields lie fallow, so don't mm -hmm. even don't even plant. And then he says, and if you're worried, anxious, yeah, I mean immediately, like my first thought is like I'm anxious, even just right, hearing right, it, right. you know. <laughs> and, and so he speaks, he says, Jake, if you're, <laughs> if you're anxious, then don't be, because if you follow this law, I'm going to provide for you. Yeah. And it's not just miraculous. I mean, he talks about storage. He talks about um, the fruit from the trees as opposed to like the, the stuff from the ground. Um, but it is a, a basic point that Catholics believe that God has ordered the world such that it is contingently, contingently abundant, mm -hmm. right? So what that means is I'm not, no one's saying it's just abundant and then it's like denying like famine and drought and disaster and all these things that are real. The, the point is from the very beginning, it's abundance is possible, but we are also free and, and so the, the contingency is that we obey his law and that we are, um, we rightly distribute the abundance as it's given. Right. Which is exactly what he says in yeah. Deuteronomy, where he, if you obey my law, there will be no poor amongst you. That's right. That's right. Which That's is right. one hell of a promise. Yeah. Or one heaven of one anyways. One heaven of one. You know, one last thought before we, we finish this one. If you notice, I've mentioned the parable of the talents a number of times. If you notice that at the beginning of that parable, the person that gives his servants all the coinage is is the noble man. Mm -hmm. Like that's what the yeah. scripture mentions. And it's it's that person that St. Thomas is mentioning when he's talking about liberalitas, about this virtue. It's the one that gives, that sees those in need and gives and then actually holds people to account 
the people whom he gave to to account to continue the give. Yeah. Um, and and this is this is the the virtue of liberality is not only models God in his gift to others, but actually achieves that good gift by returning the 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 gift of creation to those who need it. Mm-hmm. Because it was theirs originally. Right, right, right. You know, so this is a returning of the gift. They participate in the redemption and the repentance and mm-hmm. the return. Yeah. So participate so, in the return. That's right. How do we do it? Well, well, we can do it. Um, stock your beer yeah, with, right. with fridge. <laughs> stock your beer with fridge. Get it in there, boys. <laughs> Grace allows you to do pretty awesome things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, keep your refrigerators open. Keep people keep your door open. <laughs> keep your refrigerator doors open. <laughs> keep your refrigerators full of beer and food. Keep your home door open. I think that's another real part of liberality is that um, there is a displacement with the improper distribution of goods. And so when people need a place to stay, open your door and be liberal in, in this way. I think a lot of people get scared about letting others, even their friends, uh, stay at their home. Uh, it upsets their system, all this, mm-hmm. all the mm-hmm. rest of it. But but let liberality be your new system, as it were. Mm. I've got I've got one as yep. well. Um, there's this book, uh, The Five Love Languages, and it's just garbage. Uh, and one of the things it says is that gift giving is like a particular form of loving that some people have. And then it kind of like carves it out. Mm. Okay, fine. Maybe that's a tiny bit true. Like some people are more disposed to it. We can talk about dispositions. But it uh, just makes the person into a static creature. Well, exactly. I mean, you know. You know, these virtues, have to, we have to habituate get ourselves it. to them. Give gifts. Slowly, it takes time, but just give gifts. Yeah, give gifts. Um, give randomly them. too. Not You know, on feet. Well, maybe not randomly. Pick. Actually, here's a good one. Okay. Every feast day, doesn't not just like Christmas and Easter, but every feast day, buy a gift for somebody. Whoa, that's a lot of that's a lot of feast days. That's a for big every challenge. big <laughs> feast day, yeah, I gotta say it, it could be like an eraser. Which you calendar? can just buy somebody. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, sure. new calendar. New yeah, calendar. start slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And then also, um, don't worry. I mean, I think one of the things that's really difficult about any kind of call to liberality is that it can seem like it comes from a place of immense privilege. Like, okay, Mm -hmm. yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, open your fridge. I don't have enough food, you know, for myself, or at least I'm I'm legitimately worried. I'm working Mm -hmm. a minimum wage job, or I'm living in D.C. where everything's expensive. Yeah, that's its own problem. But um, Move this stupid bill. (laughs) um, But one thing I would say is this. Um, Whenever we talk about any of the virtues, it's always in the assumption, the Catholic assumption, that we're talking about social virtues. So what I mean is there is no such thing as a person on their own. No man is an island, and no virtue is developed on an island. Um, well, okay. In a strict sense, no virtue is developed without a relation to the other. And so especially with liberality, right, it, it is not simply that you should become liberal and just, you know, give away your things unto some kind of disaster. Um, because the liberal man, first of all, gives well, um, and neglecting your office by prodigal gift giving is not, is not doing that well. Right. Right. But with this being said, it also means that we need to encourage our whole society into acts of liberality, right? Yeah. Because we need to be re- like like what Jacob just said, um, that freedom of worry from money comes as much from the liberal person giving, right, to others. It's, it's, it's achieved in the other as much as it is in himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we need to not only try to give gifts ourselves and to develop our own liberality, but we also need to make sure that we're developing our – communities our societies um in liberality and one of the ways that this is most effective is just to have um really giant festivals because if you can have Mm -hmm. moments in where um giving and expense and expenditure and and spectacle and large offering is just part of the script as it were um, then you can inspire others to be liberal yeah this is really important saint thomas really specifies that 
the difference between liberality and prodigality is not that the prodigal spends more than the liberal man does. In many cases, the liberal man spends more money than the prodigal man does. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Uh, most fulfilled in actually assuming religious life, he says. You know, because at that point, you have fully negle neglected the world of mammon and fully embraced the anxiety-free world of God. Yeah. Um, so you, so that is the liberal man par excellence. That's the monk. Um, but how do we start to bring in a monkish... Sorry, I'm playing with this now. It's going to be loud. Yeah, it's gonna, I'm really sorry, everybody. Uh, how are we going to assume a monkish life? Well, it is in part by enjoying the fruits of festivity of beatitude that he is living more often. And that means that there's going to be some sort of sacrifice that you live the rest of your life to be able to afford these things. So yeah. budget out to party. Sure. Yeah. We're going to have to do one of these things on just straight festival. Just festival. Yeah. yeah. Really have to. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, you're getting a sense for this. It really goes against all the logic of, of the capitalist world that we live in. Oh, now. I made the claim that I was going to say how it's like, Liberalism. Do it quick. Do it quick. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, um, and this is uh, going to be the end. Oh, well, okay. It's already really there because uh, liberalism is characterized as a political philosophy and theology on the basis of carving out purely human spaces, purely natural spaces, secular spaces in which God is irrelevant and the spiritual power of the Catholic Church is denied its you, efficacy. You're speaking about the regular liberalism that we usually... Yeah, 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 bad liberalism. Yeah, Sorry. bad liberalism. So, for instance, you have, like, in politics, you have the kind of idea of a neutral uh, marketplace of ideas um, in which truth doesn't really matter because we're all just uh, bracketing our beliefs to have public discussions. Or within economics, you have the idea of, like, a free market in which it doesn't really matter whether our actions are good or bad. It's rather that we're just responding to the desire that we have. Uh, we're just feeding into a market system in which desires are produced um, and we're not actually obligated to be good and do good. Um, so in the same way, what you have is um, this idea of the, wait for it, it's coming, the idea that we need to carve out spaces where humanity takes care of itself, right? And this is fundamentally the denial, right, of our reception of everything, including politics, including economics, from God. Yeah, God wants to be more a part of our economy. Exactly, yeah, one hundred percent. And yeah. and and so, and so, what you do, what the lack of um, liberality does um, as a virtue, and it gives us that false image of God, and turns towards the the covetousness, whereby man is the one who needs to accumulate and not spend and worry about money and not trust in God has its analog, I think, to the liberal um, project of securing man in this world in a purely natural way. So liberal versus liberal. That's what it comes down to. There it goes. All right, guys. All right. Go stock your refrigerators, everybody. Bye. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs> <laughs>